So hello, again, this is Stefano Ritteri and we are in my studio and um, I just want to show you a bit how I work uh, with Cubase uh, in some different um, production situations. In this case, um, I just opened the project I, I started yesterday. Um, so it's, it's just, you know, really how, how I write ideas, not really how I then develop them, but this is how, you know, this very messy session is how I normally start um, a song and hopefully sometimes I even finish them. I remember when, when the, you know, the, the, the time stretching algorithms were introduced, you know, before you had one or two and, you know, it was fairly good, but, you know, you couldn't really select material, you know, you couldn't really select what you wanted to use for what. And then they started, uh, you know, adding all the different algorithms for, you know, percussive elements or, or melodic and, you know, to keep the, the, the things in tune or, or rather to keep the rhythm of, of a certain loop or a certain thing. That was very, very good. Or when they started using Groove Agent, you know, and then you could just drag and drop samples into it and chop it up very quickly using regions and, and you know, chuck it in, in Groove Agent, which is very light. It's not as, as heavy as Halion or Contact or other samplers, which I also use, but sometimes I just need something li literally to, you know, use little, little snippets from audio and just load them in, in Groove Agent and play with them on the keyboard. And when that was, you know, when you started being able to drag and drop things, that was, it was really good. And you started having all your you know, your effects or compressor stuff always available uh, there. So you just have to turn them on and you don't have to load plugins in, in an audio track, but you can just, you know, go in every audio track and, and turn on the compressor or the, em the envelope shaper was something really good. It was something that I remember was present in some other programs before. And I was always wondering when it's Cubase going to have it. And then I think it was at five or six when they started putting it in. And now I'm using it pretty much in every track. Um, then, you know, going forward, like the new with six or with seven, I, I, I'm always confused because I love them all, but with six or seven, they started um, using, uh, like they started putting in some other plugins like vintage compressors or stuff which has actually a character because Cubase EQs and um, Dynamics, has, uh, you know, they've always been very clean, which is something I really like, you know, especially in mixing situations, you like to have some plugins with character and some plugins very clean. And since, you know, since a few, uh, you know, versions of Cubase, now you have, some character plugins within the program itself. So, so I'm, I'm finding myself using them more and more also because they're very, very light on the CPU. So you can load them as many as you want. And some sessions of my, my records are pretty heavy with automations and plugins. So being able not to have to load third party ones, but you know, internal ones, it's, it's pretty cool. But as I said, I think every, every year they're really pushing the bar forward with some new useful stuff. What we have here, it's it's just uh, um, you know some samples and some lines that I, I threw in yesterday night, you know, trying to think of some ideas. And um, what I normally do is I, I tend not to start with a specific template, or um, I like to start with a blank project, because um, because I'm here every day and every night, um, I would find it a bit I don't know limiting, you know, if I would open already something with a specific uh, synth or drum machine or, or sound. So normally what I do is I would listen to some records when I'm at home or when I'm traveling and when I have an idea I just drop some audio in and that would trigger then a series of other ideas and sometimes I end up deleting what originally, uh, you know, what I originally wanted to do. Um, in this case, um, I, I was, yesterday I was just playing around uh, I started playing around with drums, um, like sometimes happens, and I started playing around with, with machine, which is uh, something I really like to do. So if I play to you, it's it's um, just a, a, a drum groove really, uh, that I recorded uh, by playing on the click. So you can hear that it's not exactly perfectly on time all the time, and the kick and the hi-hat, it's always changing. Um, I tend to do this nowadays, I tend not to write stuff in there in the in the in the right places because I try to have a, a bit of randomness to it. So by just putting the the click track and playing and recording 16 or 32 bars, there are some little mistakes in it, which I kind of like. So you can hear in this 32 bars loop that sometimes the the little tom or the hi hi hat is off, but I kind of like it. So other than that, I you know in this case I, I, I'm, I'm trying to write something which is a bit like old school sounding to me. So one trick which I, I love uh, to use in Cubase for a long time is actually one of the oldest features that Cubase has, which is a very basic step sequencer, um, which I, in this case, have assigned to the Mini Brute synth, uh, which is one of my favorite analog synths, and I can really, I love the tone of it. Um, so when I've done this groove, 
I tried to play a few lines with it, but because the groove is so wonky, I don't, I didn't really know how. So what I've done is I opened the MIDI trap with the brute, and in the MIDI inserts, I've used this, which is the most basic step sequencer in the world. I'm a big fan of analog step sequencers, and I've used them for many years. This is very basic. You basically just input the notes and velocity if you want uh, to change and trigger some other elements. But basically, by turning on the MIDI track, we have the MIDI brutes playing, so, which is there, and it's triggered by this. And it's uh, it's very fun. Like sometimes I just load a random sequence. You just press random, and it's random. And then I just move up and down things, and uh, you can add a little swing to it. Um, in this case, there is very little. It's only you know the minimum. You can add as many steps as you want. You can make it shorter. You can make it jump steps. As I said, it's very ba basic in the sense that it only has one line of 32, but. You know, I, I kind of like this weird uh, line. I, I would never have, you know, I, I could never come up with such a line by playing it. And I find it a bit boring to open the media editor and input notes in here. So I, I you know, I go random and um, I just start a random line with this and then I start moving it until it sounds good to me. So this is, you know, this is how I started this little idea and I really like it. So when I started, you know, first of all I had the idea and then I, I went on the synth and made this sound which is really weird, electric and you know, the resonance all up and then trying to find the point where it sounds good and I'm happy with it and then straight away you know, normally I would start recording stuff with this, but I'll do this a bit later. So straight away I figured that if this becomes my main line for the record, uh, it's not it's not powerful enough on the bass. So I figured what's easier than just do exactly the same with the bass. So I've opened one of my favorite public plugins for bass, which is Diva, which sounds really good. Um, and I just made, I've just opened another step designer, copied the settings, and so, this adds the bass to it. And then I will be able to move it and, and open it and close it as much as I want. Um, so the two together, I always have to restart from bar one. That's one thing. It's it's old school in the sense that if I if I turn on the step sequencer in, in between bars, it would, be, it would be a bit funny. So I always just start from zero. And then I'm thinking, okay, you know, this this sounds more like it because I know that I can tweak the brute and make it, you know, become the, the main high frequency, especially with this resonance all up. But then again, I, I thought it, it's really cutting up, especially when I when I will open the filter on the brute. But then um, somehow I wanted to have a little more impact to it. So I've opened another favorite of mine, which is the ARP. I like to complicate my life these days. Uh, so I've opened this. Which is a very beautiful synth and it's pretty complicated and in this case actually it's used for this it's a hi-hat sound which is triggered by the same third instance of the step designer again and it just adds this little top end if you want to the other two and then i can play around with the filter and the envelope and make it you know and make it somehow longer and shorter. Like I can automate this on a second, on a second moment. And I keep it really, really low because it, it, it just has to be a little, little pointy thing to cut a bit more in the mix. And because I can automate it, as I said, like the envelope, so it becomes an open and closed, you know, and you know, feeling. And, and you know, for this kind of record, I, I'm really going for a. Mm, a sort of an improvised somehow sound. So what would I do in a, in, a, in you know later on when I'm when I'm when the song is taking shape? I would record I don't know 64 bars or, or maybe more, maybe five minutes or ten minutes of you know automations in the ARP. So it would always change you know the, the length and the envelope and the filter because I really think I really I'm really liking now to write stuff that sounds very much live. So in this case is a VST. I just you know, press right and I record any automation I want and Cubase will save it. And I'm also able, if I want to, to really go into it and, you know, and, and tweak it as much as I want. For example, for the breakdown, I can go really crazy. And then, you know, once you just 
press write again, then it's all written down and it's really cool. But um, when I can't do this um, in MIDI because uh, the mini brute, for example, can get me, you know, note on and off, but wouldn't, you know, the knobs, they don't send or receive any MIDI. So I won't be able to control it. So what would I do is I would record it in audio. And uh, one feature which is really useful in this case for me in Cubase is the versions. So what I would do is I would just uh, create an, a mono track. Here we go. And I can select, I, I have... Uh, you know, wired everything in the studio. So I try to have everything always ready for, you know, for recording, you know, when the inspiration comes, um, especially now that I'm using more external stuff. So as you can see, I already have different inputs already preset up. So I would just call the brute in, which means my brute should be um, now recording straight away. So I would just create, um, let's say, a smaller loop hit record and that's the mini brew so I would just play with it for 20 minutes depending you know just having fun a bit with the envelope imagining a build-up moment And then I leave it going for hours sometimes. Thank God most of the times my friends are here and they remind me that I've recorded a good half an hour of this. And, um, and that's when I start having fun. As I said, uh, I like to work with audio, you know, like uh, even, you know, if, if I had a synth which could record everything MIDI, I'm pretty sure I would still be probably using this way because that's how I've always done it. So I would name this. Uh, and mute the original part, which is here. So, what would I do here? Because, I, I mean, I, I didn't do many takes, but what would I do is I would turn on the lanes. So I see that I've recorded uh, pretty much, oh, well, only one lane, no, maybe, well, Let's say normally if I would record a bit more, I would have a, a few of them. I would have like a good seven or eight. And what I could do is uh, if I want to go through different takes, I could select what I want to listen by putting the comping tool. So I would, for example, this part is nice. Then that one. I like it. And then it's now playing the one below. And then I want to use this little part there. It's, it's closed. So basically, you know, it allows you to comp and choose instead of having to mute and unmute all the time. I find this really, really amazing because in this case, you know, especially when I have seven or eight lines, you know, what would I've done before is um, chopping them, you know, with the scissors and then put them in, in you know, in, in a line. So I would know later on what would I want. Whereas in this case, um, this is, you know, it makes my life much easier because I can just listen to it once or twice select straight away the parts I like and then you know I can just select all of this and this is a selection and I can copy to a new track and then you know this becomes this becomes what what I want it to be you know I, I you know I can just take all of this and move it somewhere else well move it to some other audio and then copy it again and create you know different versions and now with the the new 7.5 we have also actually the versions which means let's say that I've comped this part and this is good but then I'm like maybe I could do it with a bit less resonance so all I have to do is you know this is version one I create version two it's still the same track is ready to go is ready to record if I actually open the MIDI track is ready to record I can I don't know play around with it without resonance or changing something and then I can comp this version as well. And then I can go, my version one is here. And if I like this, this will become the first part. 
The version two would be the breakdown, for example, where I put the LFO and go crazy. And then, you know, have all one trap there, which is very, very useful. And uh, this makes my life much easier, especially working with singers, you know, because um, most singers, they like to to send you a good 45 tracks of, of, of the same of the same part. Um, and um, before it would have been very, very time consuming to go through all of them to look for the, you know, the things and chop it up and put it in a folder. Whereas in here, I can just literally play them a few times and highlight with the comping tool, highlight the, the parts where I like the most. And then where I've done it, then that's a version and that's it. And that's, you know, a folder and that's one audio track for me. You know, like I, obviously I like to have harmonies and I create sometimes harmonies using the pitch here and using, the, you know, the, the Cubase functions. But I mean, if I was working on a pop project, then, you know, I would, I would have hundreds of vocals. But in, in my songs, I, I tend to have two or three main ones and then create harmonies. And if the singer didn't quite do the harmonies, I sometimes create the harmonies myself by pitching um, the original one, uh, you know, a third or a fifth higher and lower and then add some effects and then when the singer is listening to the result normally they, they're very pleased with how good the harmonies are and I'm not going to tell them that I've actually made the harmonies with, with the Cubase instead of using their own but you know you always have to be careful with singers and um, so this is it makes my life much easier really and I'm using this a lot now that I'm recording external stuff because as I said I like to play around with with audio a lot um, again sometimes I even like to listen to uh, if I switch off the lanes here, then we would have my comped version. And um, what I like to do sometimes is um, if, if I recorded this for 20 minutes and then somehow I still don't like it, um, I like to chop it up. You see, like you, we already hear the hit points uh, that you can move with the threshold. So I can select which one I want. And in this case, for example, I want these ones. Um, I like every, every slice to be to be separated and then I create events with this little button and the good thing about it is that then it's all small audio events which for example one thing I use this for is uh, to quantize I'm very very peculiar with my quantizing I, I, I like to things to swing in a particular way so um, I have um, saved through the years I've imported uh, MPC swings uh, I've, I've, I've been using the MPC all my life and now I don't have it anymore but I've saved uh, um, MPC quantize um, and basically there is a way um, of, of importing the MPC quantize within Cubase and save it. So for example in this case the brute what I've recorded before now it's all separate audio parts which I can pitch separately for example I can just play around it It's very useful to have the transpose here. It, it's something I'm, I really, really like because once I have an audio file, then I can play around with it for hours and hours. And instead of having uh, to click and pitch it, uh, if you want to have a very brutal pitching, this works really well. Otherwise, uh, when I'm working with vocals or stuff or stuff I want it to be perfectly on tune, what I would do is I would go in the normal menu, process, pitch shift, because this uh, allows you to use the different algorithms uh, which sound really good uh, so if you want it you know if you want a musical pitch if you want a more like uh, if you're pitching uh, rhythmic stuff that you want to retain rhythmic uh, content more than the pitch you know what i mean like you can you can you know do do a pitching in a much more precise way this way and, and you have the preview so you know it's always worth trying for different material different algorithms and see which one sounds the best even though i gotta say most of times i use this uh, the, you know th this algorithm uh, which you can also select here as well you know you even have the different selection by drums pads vocals um, because somehow I find that this one the pro time is very very blunt it's very it's not very gentle the way it pitches stuff and I, I really like it I really like the fact that it sounds a bit grainy somehow it, it, it makes the sound a bit worse which I like in some cases obviously not if I'm working with some angelic choir vocals which is it's never the case though so it's I like to use this and I like to have it already there, you know, so I select a little audio and it's there, you know, the transpose and it's very useful when I'm just loading a sample in or an a cappella or whatever, a synth line which I recorded before and it's, I know straight away it's not in tune with the song I'm making so instead of, you know, thinking about too much I just move my mouse 
up and down until I know where pi what pitch fits the best and then I can go back to zero and pitch it properly if I want to um, and then make it sound a bit better. So um, this is really cool because as I said, uh, now it's all audio and I can select them all and quantize them with whatever MPC I want. So you see them moving and oh, I always use the IQ, which means it's, um, it's not quantizing it straight away to the position where they're supposed to be, but they are slowly moved to the position where, where I want. So I normally, you know, whatever, if I go to some crazy MPC 66, I don't necessarily have to arrive to this, which shifts completely out of, you know, out of the grid, because that's what the MPC would do on, at 66%. But I would just start and gently do it. Well, not that gently in the 66, but you know, like move it off the grid in a more gentle way. And this is something I use pretty much on everything, like everything in my records as always. I tend not to use the same uh, quantize for all the tracks. Like my drums uh, have a certain swing. Sometimes it's the machine swing, sometimes it's the MPC. And then I play with the swing of the bass line. Like I like things to be always, to find that magic moment where everything is not perfect, but somehow it sounds a bit more groovy because it's not perfect. I don't like super quantized grooves. I never, I never did. And um, so for example, um, the, the Korg Volkas are really, really great. One thing I think is missing is the you know they don't have any swing you know so if they if you use their sequencer it sounds really amazing but they don't have swing so what I would do is I would use them um, with a MIDI from Cubase and already swinging them in, in you know in the MIDI and then when I record them in audio I would swing them even more by chopping them up and creating um, events like I've done here um, another thing about creating events uh, which is pretty interesting is that um, for example if you load uh, the Groove Agent which is here. Uh, I'm using this more and more, to be honest. I'm finding a, a very, uh, you know, I'm finding it a very good alternative for machine, really. This new version has pretty much all the functions and uh, it's very light to load. So for example, my, my old laptop, which I travel with, sometimes it gets a bit stuck if I use machine and Cubase full on open. So if I'm writing down an idea, uh, because I'm very bored in, in an airport and I'm trying to impress some, some girl by making music in my headphones, I would fire up Groove Agent instead and play with it. And one thing I like is that once I create slices of whatever it is, you know, it could be a loop, it could be a percussion loop, you know, you can just take them and, and, and drag and drop them and then you have everything sliced up. So in this case, all the notes are pretty similar, but you know, I could take a, a, a percussion loop, for example, let me see, if I import um, any, any loop, you know, like I like to, like every other producer, to have as many options as possible. So I like to collect loops and um, at any sort, really. For example, this is a, a nice uh, conga loop here. Um, what I do is I try not to use them as they are. I normally import them or I like them for their tone and their sound more than what the, the pattern they do. So to make it a bit more personal and a bit more random, um, what I would do is I would load a file. In this case, I've loaded a Rex file, which is really cool because um, Cubase puts the Rex file always on time with whatever the tempo of the song is. Um, so instead of using this loop, what I would do again, this is it's a part. So as I showed before, it's like a little box with all the little events. So in this case, what did I do is I dissolve the part. So I have all the events here. I could work on them audio like, like before, or what could I do? For example, I could just drag and drop them into Groove Agent. And I have basically the possibility of, where did I put my Groove Agent track? Blah, 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 blah. Well, I will create another one just in case. Groove agent. So now all the slices of that loop are all sliced up, MPC old school way. So I can just record a MIDI part. And then quantize it with my MPC. So I can use the tone of this loop, of this sample, but use it my own way. Sometimes I like to do this with vocals as well. It's uh, when I have to do a remix, for example, um, I try not to use entirely the vocals because I think, you know, the vocals have been used already in the original. So sometimes I just take um, 
the, you know the main the main vocal or you know the the, the simplest of, of the vocals and I I with the process I've showed before I create the events from every single word by you know putting down the threshold and then I put I, you know I slice it up and I put it in a sampler or into Groove Agent or into Machine sometimes and play with it so basically it becomes something different you know I play with the words so I create a different melody sometimes or a different phrase uh, just by playing randomly with MIDI events and this is pretty cool also because um, I can even decide per every cell to you know to pitch it differently to change the envelope um, I really like for example to be able to use uh, different um, settings of, of like you know distortion and, and you know you can see all your slices here you can make one longer you can loop it you can really go a bit random really with what you have and, I, and, and again I like a bit of randomness in my music so um, again I would load most of the times I would load a, a loop and make it, make it sound completely different just by playing around with it and this is a very nice function that Cubase has that I can just load anything in audio split it up automatically with the, with the hit points not having to go through every single part and it's very precise actually it cuts the stuff really really precise if, if you see what we were what we were chopping up before and then you know and then I can quantize it if I like the audio or I can put it in a sampler and play with it and and then once it's audio again again for example it, you know uh, I can decide this very one, I can process it and reverse it. Process. Pitch it. And you know, generally play, or sometimes I pitch the whole thing. And become something else. Whatever, you know, like, uh, you know, again, I think it's. It's very fun. For me, it's, it's good fun to play with audio because, you know, you can do everything. For example, here, it's, 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 it's a stab from a, a tape effect. I, you know, it's in E. It tells me that the sample it tells me that it's in E. I transposed it already one below because maybe I'm, I'm in D. I don't even know what, what, you know, what key I'm in this record, but... I can, for example, if I want to go a bit more precise, I can go in the pitch shifting menu as before, but instead of using the transpose, I use the envelope. So I can tell it, for example, bring it up, you know, as much as you can for 12 semitones, so a whole octave. And you go, and we are in space. Um, you know, so all these sorts of, you know, audio stuff is really fun for me. Especially for effects, I, I could be doing this for a whole night. Uh, especially if I set up some dub delays and stuff, I, I think of myself as a dub producer and, and I could play with that for hours and hours. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much an idea, you know, of, of what I how I start songs, you know, normally just to groove and chuck in some samples and then play with them until my ears are bleeding and then the next day I come back and sometimes I ask myself what have I been doing in the last two days, but sometimes it's actually a good song and I can release it.